Hello and welcome back to part three of my run through of the ArcSight solution, primarily focused around the uh, console. So in this particular session, I'm actually going to dig into a lot more around the uh, active channels and uh, some of the things that we can do and how they operate within the system itself. So um, I actually have an active channel open at the moment. Uh, again, this is something that's af uh, often asked for. So can I just display correlated events? Well, yeah, because there's actually a, a, an actual um, uh, particular one that we have uh, for this that says correlated events. So we can actually open it and just view those. So we can see these are events that are uh, correlations that have occurred, which is great. So um, if I want to, I can just double click it and open that up and, and, and see the further information. What I want to do is I wanted to illustrate some of the power that we have within the system itself and, and some of the options that we can use as well. So we can filter it, we can restrict it, we can uh, have different um, uh, sorts on this. For example, we can see that this is sorted uh, on the time. We could sort it on addresses as well. It's very easy for me to just... Um, change some of that sort uh, elements of that as well so uh, very straightforward but what i wanted to do is just illustrate what we can do and now if i actually just jump, jump to my uh, in this case repsm uh, dashboard i can see that some particular things that we've we've seen some workstations that they are uh, looking at particular um, destinations and so on which is not allowed because we hit on the threat intelligence um if i was just double click on that uh so i just double click on this particular event here it'll open up the information about the event itself so that's all it's doing is displaying this event in a particular dashboard panel in this particular case it's in a, in a, a table format however if i was to right mouse click on the actual field there so it's the ip address and right mouse click it would actually give me the option of doing uh, some further things as part of that as well the important thing there is if i was to do that it would actually dig down into an active channel well, what does that mean okay so uh, if i just uh, shuffle this around a little bit to give you a little bit more of a view um, for example, if I looked at some of the information here, I looked at, uh, for example, the uh, attacker address. So the address that we think this is the, that's initiated this one. So if I just right mouse click, I've got the option to do an investigate and, and, and dig through the various information there. Um, that becomes a very powerful way for me to, to then view active channel data and I can I can do this at any point so again I can I can start to look at all of this notice how within all of the dashboards I've just done the same right mouse click I can see the same uh, investigate option and so on now again because I've got limited real estate space uh, you're not seeing all the various elements there but you know for example I'm just here just clicking the uh, create uh, an active channel based on that search so all it's done is it's the look to the data in the field in this particular case it's looked at the ip address it's then looked at the time period of that particular uh, dashboard panel which it what, what it was there and what it's done there as it said it flashed up that dialog box that i just clicked okay what it means is that of course if it's over a day it's just illustrated it's over a day which is what the data is there and hey presto it's filtered and given me that view but it's given me that view in an active channel and it's given me the view of both base events and correlated events in a single contiguous uh, based on time element of the information. So suddenly we've got a very powerful way to, to view the data within a dashboard panel, but then use these active channels to then manipulate and display that as well. So what are the things that we can do with it, within an active channel? So let's, let's jump back to this particular view here. So we've got all sorts of data here uh, and we can uh, look at a particular field, uh, sorry, look at a particular event and we see all the information there. And like I say, we can right mouse click and so on. But the great thing is here is let me just scroll across here. Say I'm interested in this particular IP address. I could right mouse click and I can investigate. I can add it to the existing channel. I can create a new channel. Uh, I can add it to that particular one. I can do a not and so on. I can add it to the particular uh, condition for the filter that I've defined as well. Well. But what I can do is I can just um, uh, add it to a particular channel here and actually carry on the investigation. Now, if I add it to this channel, so if I just click add to channel, it'll add that as a particular search filter for that and allow me then to just view that data. So there we go. It's just filtered that data down to this particular IP address. But notice it's added this down as an extra tab here. So if I want to, I can go backwards and forwards through that data. And I can have multiple tabs down here, and I can have multiple tabs up here based on the dashboards or active channels. So suddenly I've got this very powerful way of jumping backwards and forwards within the data. And again, when I'm ready to get rid of it, I can just close it 
and go back to my original view. So that's the first one. We can have these sub tabs down here of the grid to further dig down and view my data. So okay, that's that's useful. What about when I actually want to do some triage and start understanding what's going on with, with something that's occurred? So in that case, I'm going to show a little bit more. Let me just remove the navigator panel from this to view a little bit more data. So we've got a whole set of information here, and that's really useful. But let me let me look at the correlated events for a second. So we've got a whole thing, a whole set of things that are occurring here. Now I'm actually going to pick on this particular one here, this brute force login. So let me just pause that for a second, so it's not going to update and, lose, and, and move across that one. So again, if I just double click that, it'll open up that correlation event, and it'll view uh, what's actually triggered this accordingly. So we can see there's a whole bunch load of uh, login failures, uh, and actually I can look at these. It's a uh, operating system failure. It's coming, oh, it's a Windows, it's coming through from uh, this particular environment. So, um, oh, okay, this is probably something we need to look into. Uh, and in a case of uh, brute force login, we know that it's because uh, somebody's tried to log in and then subsequently has logged in. And again, if you, if just for reference, for right mouse click, you can actually go and see what actually, go, jump to the rule that actually triggered that. I'm not going to do it in this example, but I just wanted to show you, you could do that. So that's all very useful. Um, but in context, I'm not seeing anything around this because remember, I filtered this particular view to just only view correlated events. So I don't see the context and I don't really want to keep looking at this particular view where I've got all the events interspersed with everything else. And this is on my environment, very low events. If this was a real environment, this would be thousands and it would be constantly scrolling. So it becomes in, uh, unmanageable. What I can do, again, is I can right mouse click uh, and I can actually do what they call the event context channel. So what does that do? Um, what it actually does is it gives me the option of viewing relative events based on the source and destination, host name and IP address of this particular correlated event. And I can do it for a particular time frame. So in this particular example, I can do this for, I'm only going to do it for 10 seconds because it's very straightforward. Uh, in this particular example, it's just open that channel for 10 seconds and it's going to show me all the related events to that combination of source, IP address, host name and so on. It takes a second or so for it to actually pull that data. And uh, when it displays it, you'll see very clearly what's involved. So there's my brute force logins, and there's my other elements of what's related. So in this particular case, what's related is uh, these IP addresses. Now, the important thing here is, is that also, not only has this username Mario been used here, also they've tried other IP addresses from the same, uh, in this case, target. So we can see that this, this machine, this particular server has been targeted not only on this user account Mario, but are these other user accounts as well. And of course, uh, I can view that data. And if I wanted to, I could even put that into a very, what, what we call a, a, an event graph. Uh, so let me just do that again so you can actually see that. So you can do that in an event graph. And actually just throw that into a very quick view of what's relevant logically and to visualize what's going on. So now we can see that, that, that there's been a number of brute force logins against this server. We can see a whole bunch of other things that have occurred. We can see that there's a hundred number of things that have occurred with regards to processes of exited and so on. So that gives me a very simple view of, of understanding and, and just visualizing at the size being relevant as well of, of what's actually going on. But of course, I can jump back to my original view here and jump back to my original grid there as well at all points. So the event context is useful, but what I can also do is look at the actual uh, information as it's occurred as well. So again, let me just uh, shuffle that along a little bit. Uh, I'm, I'm interested in this particular source, uh, sorry, attacker address where this, this brute force login has come from. So again, I can, I can dig into that, but I can also go, well, you know what? I'm actually really interested in understanding more about that IP address. So I can dig into and understand uh, any other events that there have occurred as part of this. So again, this is where I've just done a, a drill down and it's just automatically filled in my, my uh, uh, attacker address filter. Notice the difference though, is in this case, it hasn't included the correlated events. I'm only doing that on the events that are matching that particular filter, which is this particular one. So suddenly I've expanded my filter view to view all these other events and I can see what's going on accordingly. So you can see I can go backwards and forwards through these grids 
very simply and very easily. I can throw it into a quick visualization. I can right mouse click and I can drill through that without having to type anything, without having to manipulate anything. And I can add it to the conditions and go backwards and forwards. So, okay, that's that's a powerful way of doing things. But a couple more little things to consider as part of this. Of course, what I'm doing is viewing this data. Now, if I click and hold the little, little uh, scroll bar at the side here, you'll notice it actually says uh, rows uh, and it'll say 1 to 18 of 3,700. The console is operating as a, as a thick client, so it's actually pulling down this data and storing this, this data that it's, it's rendering effectively, this log data, and it's doing so in memory. So, you know, it does actually consume a fair amount of memory. So we do recommend that you have a workstation with a good amount in, in it. But you can see that this is dis displayed as blue, which means it has actually run the query. It's pulled that data down. It's viewed those events and it's stored in memory. Now, if I scroll that down, you'll see it goes red. Now, I keep it held on the button here, so not to release it. Uh, what that means is if it's in red, that that data has not been pulled down. It's relevant. It's there. It just hasn't retrieved it from the database to render it and display it. If I let go, it will actually complete that query and download that data. So if I let go, it pulls the data. So if I go back now, you see it goes red, 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 uh, go a little bit further. Uh, and then where I find the bit where it says blue, uh, I'll see the relevant data and it's pulled the data down. There we go. Uh, we'll see there uh, all the red data again, going back to blue. The reason for, for mentioning that is when you're looking at this data and you're going backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards through this data here, it's doing a query. Every time it goes red, it's doing a query to pull that data down again. And, and that will have an impact if you're having a massive uh, time frame on this one. I'm only displaying 3,600 events. You can display up to a, you know, multiple days worth of data and have millions of events in there. Now, naturally, that will have an impact on the operating speed of the console itself and the amount of memory that's storing in the console on your workstation. So just be aware that you probably want to keep the time frames reasonable. You don't want to be going scrolling all over the place and having to have the system pull back all sorts of weird and wonderful data backwards and forwards because it is actually doing that query to view that data for you. Uh, and of course, it's not just this information, it's the full event information. So in this particular example, it's all of this data that's retrieving as well. So just bear that in mind with regards to the console. Also, the other thing to consider is the default view for the console only displays this limited set of data. So the end time, what we call end time, and I'll talk more about that in the next session with regards to timestamps, the name of the event, uh, what we call the attacker username uh, and uh, addresses, as well as the target username and addresses, uh, and the what we call the device vendor and product that's involved. So you can save that, you can update that, you can do whatever you want, and, and you can actually add all these additional columns to this. So for example, what I might be interested in is uh, I might be interested in the uh, if I've got a, a geographic information that's in there as well, I might want to put the uh, the flag in there so we can actually see there's a whole load of flags that's come from particular locations. We can see there's a Korea, we can see there's Malaysia and so on. We can put that data in there because we have that and that might be useful uh, and we can change and we can drag and we can drop and we can move those fields around. We also have support for like I mentioned before, these customized columns as well. So we can actually put in all sorts of relevant information uh, about this as well. Uh, notice the ones where it says this, this particular uh, up and down, which means we can sort on those fields as well. We can uh, put the particular uh, fields in that element in that, that order as well. What we can also do is we can actually have customized columns as well. So we can actually create uh, combinations of things. And again, you've noticed in this one uh, where it says, I'm going to choose this as an example, attack a target. So we can actually just have, and it is literally HTML. You can define HTML in here uh, and put it in. Now, what does that look like? If I just click the preview, it gives you from the attacker address on the attacker host name was relevant. So it's, if I add that in, column, add, Actually, you can't quite display it, but it's attack a target here. Hey, presto, we get this composite field. I'll just make that a little bit bigger so we can see it all. What it does is it tells you from IP address 
and port number to IP address and port number. So we're not just limited to the actual database fields. We can define these columns to show what we want them to show based on the fields within the event. So this is all was just using um, some HTML within that, and it's just rendering that and displaying that data. So again, we've got a huge amount of flexibility to view this with regards to the table data. I mentioned before that these are the events and the, 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 the breakdown on the priorities, but of course we've got this little radar that displayed here, uh, and of course I could just drag and drop across this to display the time periods involved. So I could just highlight those, and that filters the view to only displaying those time frame events in there. So again, it's going out, it's pulling the data back, and it's displaying that time frame rather than the full set. If I want to go back to the full set, I just drag it right across. And hey presto, we have everything. So again, very quick, very simple, just a quick walkthrough of some of the options and the capabilities within an active channel to drill forward, to drill through, to look at the data and to visualize and to even represent that data within the columns in a very simple and very easy way. Just right mouse clicks and drills down and investigates or added the data into columns. So that's it for this section. Uh, in the next section, I'm actually going to dig into a lot more, more detail around uh, filters and how we can use those filters to view the data and how we can manipulate the view of, of the information that's shown. So with that, thank you very much.